I'd like to show you why knowing your why is the start of your journey. Without a strong why, it can be so difficult to reach your maximum potential. My name is Dr. Jason Ballara, and every week I meet with real estate investors and mindset specialists that are taking action in order to build a life according to their own terms. We will break down what drives successful people and allows them to achieve at such a high level. If you are a professional wanting to break through, or simply someone that wants to hear an inspiring story, the Know Your Why podcast is made for you. Hi everyone, I'm Jason Ballara, and this is the Know Your Why podcast. Today I'm here with Isra Banks. Isra is a registered architect in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, uh, founder and principal of Tribeck Architects and faculty at Boston Architectural College. Um, Isra, first of all, thank you so much for joining me today. I appreciate your time. I appreciate you coming on the podcast. Thank you. Thanks for having me. It's such a yeah, pleasure. Absolutely. And so I would love it if you would just go ahead and kind of tell the listeners your story, your background, and kind of what, what brought you to uh, into architecture, uh, or what brought you up as an architect, and then, you know, kind of what you've been working on. I wish I had a very interesting story. I feel like I've fallen architecture by accident. So, uh, and it was a happy accident. Um, yeah, um, architecture. Yeah, I'm not that kind of child who always dreamt about, you know, about um, doing Legos and drawing houses. Although I helped building my family's, not building it, but helping the process of overseeing the project of our house. I loved math, physics, and I probably, not probably, certainly I wanted to, to be a doctor, but uh, <laughs> it, it, for one reason or another, it did not work out at that time. And my mom said architecture. I said, that no <laughs> probably physics probably electrical engineering i love physics and things like that and let's just try it i was like okay <laughs> okay just just so i can tell you that i don't like it uh and yeah from the first day i was hooked it was it was like oh, this is this is so much not just fun it's energizing it's a lot of you know it's different it's deep thinking it's it's experimenting it's a lot of things so yeah uh it went great uh so yeah that's how i got into it and then i did five years of bachelor's and then i worked as an architect for quite a while six years and then I uh, went uh, for grad school to learn more. Um, there was a lot of ambiguity around at that time, things like um, sustainability and technology and should we build glass skyscrapers or should we be more, um, should be, be more, you know, going back to uh, the vernacular architecture and how people were built in the built in the past when they were more um, in tune with the environment. So if you if you look back to um, vernacular architecture, you find like people. Um, or I don't know, they, we don't know how they studied it, but what they did exactly. But um, each building were designed as a machine to cool and heat and uh, be mindful to where the wind is coming from. They used physics uh, to um, solve problems, climate problems. Uh, when after the industrial revolution, we uh, got heating and cooling systems and installed them, and we we started focusing more on um, 
you know, philosophy and uh, being creative and bringing out things that are, you know, different or simple or modern. And probably that's one of the reasons uh, modernism, not against modernism, but what's modernism probably some would say failed or died. Or... So yeah, so I, I think I, I got clarity by going to Boston Artificial College. A lot of, a lot of studies on building science um, which improves our thermal comfort inside the building or which eventually improves our health. Uh, and then I got interested more in humans' environmental behavior. And how do you, how do you design a space that induces good feelings or what's the difference between you know, a good place and a bad place, a good space, bad space. There is not saying there is good and bad, but that's what got my interest the most. So uh, sustainability, comfort, and they, they are all uh, intertwined or yeah, there, there's a lot of overlap between health and sustainability. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, it's interesting to me that your <laughs> your mother just sort of suggested architecture and that turned you into, you know, that turned into your passion, which is, I think most people, if they, you know, sort of go after the job that their parents suggest for them, it doesn't often go that way, right? You just end up sort of mm -hmm. finding a job, but it sounds like you found something that you really enjoy and, and you're passionate about. So that's, that's, I think, a, a lucky... <laughs> A lucky yeah, break there. Yeah. Well, she she wasn't the kind of mother who, you know, forced me to do it. She wanted she wants she fully supported me to be a doctor, but um just to yeah, to, at that at that time it was not was not an option. So she just wanted to find the next best option, and that was her guess. That yeah. was that was her intuition she's a physicist so i wanted to be like her she was a very very talented uh scientist and i wanted to do that but she was like nah <laughs> you don't want to do that <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's a, i guess yeah that, that probably being a, a, a physicist and being very you know, sort of successful in that field probably isn't um, necessarily a common path. So maybe that's why she steered you away from it. But I mean, like I said, it, it really seems like it, she was right on because it seems like that's, you know, you're passionate about it. And so maybe talk a little bit I think about- she wanted, Yeah, I think she wanted me to be an entrepreneur. Uh, that's why she thought, you know, science is not, a path for entrepreneurship. Yeah, yeah, not at least not traditionally for sure. Um, yeah. Well, tell us. Not at that time. We're right. talking <laughs> right. like more than twenty years ago. Yeah, no, yeah. I, I'm sure there's a way to kind of combine the two, but but I agree. It's, it seems like um, you don't necessarily think of science and entrepreneurship in the same in the same breath. Although, you know, you, you could point to someone like like Elon Musk and, and the science behind, uh, you know, electric vehicles and all of that and, and also being an entrepreneur. So I, th I think it just, it, it's not traditionally thought of, but yet you sort of, there's, there's also not a lot of Elon Musk in the world. So it's, it's maybe not the yeah. most uh, easy path to follow. But you, you mentioned that, um, you know, kind of sustainability and, and creating for, designing for, um, happiness and kind of the, the the how do you how do you sort of do that how does that work you know kind of what things go in what's your process when you're talking about sort of designing for those factors so um health and happiness they come hand in hand we know that 
uh, we need to have, we need to be integrated with nature. And by nature, I mean a lot of sunlight. And there's a difference between outdoor sunlight and indoor sunlight because not all the rays come into, not all the sun uh, rays come inside through glass. Um, so that's an important part. And then green is, it's, or any, any natural, especially, especially plants, we know that uh, there's a whole science about biophilia, how they affect how our, our relationship or, or how our environment um, affect our nervous system. Um, so yeah, that's number one, integration with nature and also thermal comfort too. Uh, and we, there's a, a very fine tuned control of um, temperature, humidity. So, so temperature is not the only, uh, not the only indicator. There is like a, there's like a chart that shows you where, where should your thermal comfort be. We can also, through that also, we can also, um, which this is a very, very hot topic right now, uh, we can control the spread of viruses like the COVID virus. Uh, if, if the environment is a bit more humid, um, you can stop the spread of the virus. They just don't, don't um, spread it in the air. Uh, what else do we need to do? There is a, a great deal of effect on our environmental behavior affected by um, the connection of finding the balance between privacy and proximity. So as humans, we need to be close to other people. We don't want to be isolated and lonely, but at the same time, we need to be um, we need to have our own privacy. We don't need, we, we don't want to be forced to meet someone like we don't want to meet or have to say hello to our neighbor or, or um, the student and, and let's say a dormitory student like bump into them every day um, the same at the same time or share a kitchen without that sort of privacy. So there is a, there needs to be a certain balance between that, even in, for a, a, like I say, a, an average or a, a family of five, uh, the way that you arrange the spaces, uh, if, if there was a study that shows that if children came from school and took up the stairs immediately to the room, compared to other children who they came through the door, went through the kitchen or living room, through the common space of the family, and then went to the room, they found that the second, the second configuration, uh, the, the children who lived in these houses, they had better performance in school and um, less problems compared to the children who did not go through the common area, it just went directly to the room. So yeah, the, the, there's a, even within, like when I talk, my, my specialty is more focused, my study is more focused on larger scale environment, like a, 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 a mixed use and big, large apartment complexes and housing. But even if you bring it to a smaller scale, the, these same principles uh, applies. We still wanna wanna be wanna be seen, wanna interact with people, but not. We still wanna maintain our privacy. Yeah. So, um, Makes sense. Um, yeah. So privacy and proximity, integration with nature, um, 
some light that what comes to my head. The, the biofuel is a, a whole new, complete, great science that uh, studies the neurons and uh, the effects of nature, sub-nature, includes animals, not just green, not, not just earth. Another thing that affects our mental health is um, curves. I'm not saying we should build curvy buildings. That's going to be very difficult to furniture, but probably curvy furniture. We found out that um, curvy linear is more soothing and more feels more safe to people, probably because it relates to nature or a child insert inside. I don't know. Uh, compared to rectilinears. So that um, we probably don't feel very safe around sharp edges and uh, corners and things like that. Uh, color, it seems to be very subjective. I think in the 17s, they thought that pastel should be, you know, calming or, but it seems like it, it depends on each individual's or each culture's experience. So you cannot, you cannot um, find some guidelines. Um, also about creating an environment. There are a lot of things like people want, want uh, to be, you want to invoke their curiosity. Um, that's going to help, especially for children, schools, uh, public spaces. Um, that's also a big factor in, uh, you know, affecting mental health positively. They're curious, their brains are in good ways, hormones and things yeah. like that. Uh, walkability. We, as, as uh, city planners, or um, I don't know if the listeners cannot see the picture behind me. This is one of my designs, and I was suggesting that there are there are different ways for people. The more options to uh, move around, the more options they have, the better they feel. And yeah, there are like stairs, there are ramps, there are elevators, um, so you can. Um, encourage people to you know move more yeah yeah i was going to ask you if that was your design i, I actually think it's a very beautiful building so I, I i like it a lot but i i really like that uh that's an interesting study about about the the children you know sort of coming home from school and and either going straight upstairs or, or being you know, essentially forced to <laughs> interact in the common spaces but it makes a lot of sense right you're you're, you're avoiding that isolation, you know, sort of them just hiding in their room. So, I mean, that's, there's a lot of stuff there that you mentioned that just, I don't know, I, I, I wouldn't have necessarily thought about it and what, you know, what really impacts your environment and, it, you know, it's your house, right? You, you sent whether that's, you know, a, or I guess whether it's your house or your work workspace, we spend a lot of time there. So it's kind of like, having those all of those different factors be a considered in the design is is pretty huge and and honestly quite comforting to think that like i wouldn't have necessarily thought that you know architects were th were thinking about all of that stuff that you know as they're designing and and so it's kind of really cool to know i i think i'll have a new perspective when i go into buildings and think, okay, you know, oh look, notice how this is laid out, and what what thought process went into kind of putting it that way. So that's that's very cool. And what about um, you know, well, before I go on, has your approach to design and things like that changed since COVID? Is that something that I would I would imagine probably impact how you look at spaces, how you design spaces? Definitely, yes, definitely. Um, 
what I mentioned about HVAC systems and in the past, we were mostly focused on conserving energy. Um, now we, that became a secondary aspect. Mostly we focus on ventilation now, bringing more um, natural air than we used to do before. Uh, there are ways to heat the natural air before using the, the other kind, the, the stale air, or the air that was in the room before sending it out, doing that exchange. Uh, we, a lot, the, the studies I talked about, about the spread of viruses, these are new studies that happened after COVID. Um, we've, the, um, the office, especially office spaces that um, got built have, um, there's a lot of changes. Mostly, most of the changes are to accommodate the new um, setting of hybrid, hybrid uh, sort of work, not necessarily people are gonna, we don't expect people to be spending um, eight hours, five days of a week in the office, probably some would come on certain days, come, come on other days, because I think it pr was proven that uh, working from home was very productive, very efficient. I think product, it's proven that productivity has raised, but again, we go back to the first point of prox proximity or privacy or interacting with, with people. You don't want people to be isolated. And you need these conversations in, in, the, in the space. You need team building. Um, so I wouldn't say that we should go 100% high. And that's what also what we're doing for um, our students in, in the college. Um, what else? have changed. I think most people need to, or now we're seeing that a lot of people need to have a, an office, a home office in their houses. Um, I mean, having nature and light and these are, these are good at all times. I don't, I don't think it got, it needed to be re-emphasized during COVID. These are but yeah, probably more focus on mental health. Yeah, yeah. Uh, bring up a, actually a really good point that I hadn't thought about in, in terms of the the new, you know, sort of work from home model. And, you know, everybody's been, been really focused on health, avoiding, you know, getting sick. That's, that's why, you know, all of this homework started and, and that makes sense. But your point about isolation is is a good one that you know if everybody is going to work from home type models you really are going to lose a lot of that you know kind of socialization and interaction and it's it's funny it's like you know i i feel like we think about it with children we think about okay kids that don't go to daycare or kids that are homeschooled maybe don't get that they don't get the socialization that's what's missing like you don't you don't have to go to school to learn things right you can learn things at home that's not a problem exactly. the the reason why my kids go to daycare is because so they can learn how to interact with other kids exactly. and like have those social cues and so yeah i think you know social media has made having <laughs> social interactions in person already a kind of a, a less comfortable thing because people are just so used to like being on their phones or, or interacting and, and seeing only a, a portion of, of people's lives. But yeah, work from home environment really can make that uh, an even bigger potential issue in terms of, you know, we, we will forget how to interact with each other in person, right? We just won't know how to have conversations and have uh you know be around each other in a you know common spaces so that's actually a really good point that i i hadn't thought about and i i don't feel like i've heard anyone else 
mention that as an impact of COVID. So, you know, and everybody's talking about the the changes, you know, in in the real estate space, they're like, oh, office is dead, and and it's it's you know we're not going to have office buildings anymore, and they should all be converted to housing and all of this, but that actually doesn't seem like maybe it's the best thing for for us as a society maybe it's better that we we figure out you know we we redesign how the offices are built like you said but not necessarily just never be in them um mm -hmm. so yeah that's that's actually very cool yeah for the i my my real estate real estate knowledge is not extensive i have been studying real estate and at Boston Architectural College, but um, from my understanding, well, it is a good thing. That kind of change is a good thing. We need to keep, re you know, like, saying that change, that what we, what we call it, productive change, something like that. But yeah, that kind of change should um, help us reinvent things. I mean, not just for real estate, for all kind of things. I think without COVID, uh, that that process of evolution of work could have taken a decade. Yeah. I mean, it's a blessing in this. You can't say COVID oh, is a blessing, but I mean, yeah, that kind of change was was kind of necessary to push us to the next step. Yeah, yeah. I Hopefully, mean. It's it's the, the focus has been on you know a lot of people just well well look we can still be productive if we work from home but sure that's great and i think you know some sort of hybrid model makes sense but it's uh it's hard to it it's hard to think about you know like people never being around people and and, and i think it's we've through the through the covid you know, coming up on two years, the, the, there, I think there's been a lot of, um, mental type of impact, you know, mental health impact on people from the isolation. And I think it's going to be something that, you know, it's, it's already, you know, people are already, it's like, people are traveling again and it's like they're traveling with a vengeance, right? It's like, <laughs> everybody's like, oh, I didn't get to do anything for two years and now it's just happening. Um, there's, travel has had like a huge boom. So it's just kind of a, an interesting thing to think about what what impact it's going to have on us kind of going forward. And I think you're 100% right that it, it sped up what was gonna happen in the workplace probably anyway, as we, you know, sort of realized the abilities of technology to work remotely and all of that. But yeah, makes, uh, makes, makes a lot of sense. Um, well, sorry, let, let's shift gears a little bit. I, I'd like to get the chance to ask you um, the questions that I ask all of my guests. And so uh, the first one is based on the name of the show. And uh, with that being Know Your Why, I'd like to ask you, what, what is your why? What, what drives you? To, for my business, to be an architect, uh, why? Well, it's probably the way of every architect, not just me. Architects are grievers, and uh, we think that we have the ability to change the world. I, I don't think, and I think in, in this time of age, architects, the, the public still think that architects are pro, probably egocentric, but in this day and age, architects are very um, different they mostly care about social justice and social justice and making the world a better place, making everyone happy. So I don't think I'm different from, maybe, maybe that's what drives me. That's what makes me happy, actually. What makes me happy is uh, being other people happy. Nice, nice. Yeah, I, I and, guess. Yeah, probably it's a kind of, uh, it's probably kind of a turn off for uh, business. <laughs> it's like you're you're dreaming too much. But uh, from personally for me, I I learned a lot about about finance, about real estate finance, and 
probably I also dream one day to become a developer architect. Uh, well, uh, uh, probably um, every architect's dream, but um, I'm working on it. Yeah, nice, nice. Well, I think that's, I mean, it's obviously very impactful. And I, I think, I don't know, I, I think that the, the most beautiful architecture, the most beautiful buildings out there are that way because the designer was a dreamer right like it's not it's probably not very exciting to build just a a box right like that's not <laughs> and it's not not nice to look at and maybe it's more cost effective maybe it's more um you know it's easier to build yeah yeah and i i guess that's that's the thing right in in infusing your uh vision and dreams into this these buildings that have to also be uh sustainable energy efficient mm -hmm. you know there's so many things that go into it so it's it's really actually quite a cool concept to just if you think about all of the the factors that you're considering and putting as you as you put these designs together it's and then balancing that with the cost of development and like what yeah. how you know okay we want to do whatever this feature is but that you know that, that adds millions of dollars to the project mm -hmm. It, it, I'm sure there's a lot of give and take. So that's, that's really interesting. Exactly. Yeah. Cool. Um, second question is, would you tell us something about yourself that maybe isn't common knowledge, like some special skill, a hobby, something that maybe is outside of the architect world? Hmm. I don't know. I think I'm a pretty good organizer. person. <laughs> uh, yeah, probably. I'm passionate about, you know, it's not, that's no secret about um, health and social justice and sustainability. And, but I don't think that's it. I teach. I'm so pas passionate about, about seeing my students succeed. Yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, I, I think teaching and, and sort of passing on your knowledge and skill and expertise to you know sort of future generations it's just it's always it's a really great way to to be able to give back right it's just something that and, it, and it's i i find it very um very rewarding right you get you get to a point in your not that not that you can't advance your career but sometimes you get to the, that those points in your career that maybe on your own your own personal sort of development you're like well i've done a lot of this what can i do but then when you see the the younger generation that you're teaching and you're seeing that their their steps and progress it's really really quite cool and and um it's, it makes you feel good it's 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 empowering to see that to see their development so i i understand that that sentiment um when people hear this and they want to reach out to you, what's the best way to get a hold of you? Website, uh, Trivec Architects, and then Ezra Banks on LinkedIn. Uh, email address, isra.banks at trivec, T R I V E K dot architects.com. We'll put we'll put that stuff in the show note. Uh, show notes. Final question, Istra. What what would you what piece of advice would you give to someone who's maybe starting out? Uh, you know, their their mother suggested they should be an architect. What would you what would you tell them uh, in terms of getting uh, being successful like you are? Being an, uh, don't do it. Don't, don't do, do it. architecture. Don't do architecture. <laughs> You, even if you like else. it not just if you're mom yeah not just yeah. if you're it's a it's a pretty pretty challenging profession and then there it takes a very long time to become an architect once you become an architect then there's like at least a decade until you're not called a young architect it's like it's it's yeah it's they're trying to make it more accessible or more but that's it yeah 
there's a there's a lot of uh, yeah. a lot of training that goes into it yeah. and things like that. Yeah, probably other things like real estate development would be more. I know, uh, building or the overlap of design and build, interior design. I mean, if you feel like there is no other option in the world to become an architect, then that's take it on on your own risk. <laughs> not painting a very rosy picture for for the future architects of the world is it <laughs> but it seems that it's something that you found passion in so I, I think obviously people do and you're designing beautiful buildings we can see we'll, we'll tell people for sure to check this one out on the on the just YouTube because i'm channel. stubborn not, yeah yeah just because i'm stubborn not yeah. like it's yeah. not like i'm <laughs> a lot of people get a kick of like you know, well, it's challenging. So I want to do that's what other not, not just me, a lot of other architects. It's like, yeah, we're just saying because it's challenging. <laughs> yeah, just <laughs> just trying to trying to prove it, prove that it can be done. Um, well, listen, thank you so much uh, for your time today. I really appreciate you sharing, uh, especially a lot of that insight into kind of really what what goes into the thought process behind designing these buildings it's it's um you know as i said the the, the building behind you uh your background it's a, it's very beautiful anybody who listens to this should definitely go look at the youtube channel just to see that that building i i, I love it um but thank you thank you for your time thanks for coming on the podcast thanks for having me i really enjoyed it great awesome all right well we will sign out have a great day everyone I'd like to show you why knowing your why is the start of your journey. Without a strong why, it can be so difficult to reach your maximum potential. My name is Dr. Jason Ballara, and every week I meet with real estate investors and mindset specialists that are taking action in order to build a life according to their own terms. We will break down what drives successful people and allows them to achieve at such a high level. If you are a professional wanting to break through, or simply someone that wants to hear an inspiring story, the Know Your Why podcast is made for you.